So I just thought I'd let you people know what I'm doing. I've been uh, refelting the entire roof. If you remember, those who follow us in the tackle shack here, refurbed it all inside. I did have a couple of small leaks from the big storms we've had through the winter. I mean, it's been appalling, man. It's been appalling this year. No question about it. It's about the worst wind and rain I've known for a long time. Anyway, what I've done is up here, I'll take you up there carefully. I have refelted it. I'm gonna underlap a piece of wood here, but I've actually done the entire roof there. If you can see that, done the whole thing. Four sheets of uh, felt there, shed felt, and tacked down there, about two inches apart, galvanized whitehead uh, clout nails. And that hopefully has been uh, enough to get me fishing because I want to go pike fishing badly. What you know what I want to do as well, don't tell Mike, up here, I've been looking at the oak of the trees and the branches, one dead bit. I wonder if somehow I could build a tree house up there. Or not a house, but like a tree platform. It's going to be a hunting factory, it's going to be a photograph platform. And get up high up there, over the top. And then when the leaves come out here, it would give me a good spot there to look across the fields and maybe get deer, badgers, foxes, wildebeest, all that sort of thing. The wind's still blowing. I'm going to go down the West Country. I've got to try piking down there. It's a place I've never even been there before. I've never been there. I don't know where I'm going, what I'm doing. I've got nobody give me some secret tips. This is a swim. Free tickets now. I'm just going in the tackle shop. I'm going to buy a day ticket and I'm going to go on the canal. See if I can catch something. So there you go. The tackle shake is here. I will see you guys when I get back. Check in on the film and see whether I'm going to blank or struggle yet again. So guys, welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. A little bit of session. I've driven two and a quarter hours, over a hundred miles, down into Somerset. I don't even know where I'm, Devon or Somerset, on a canal anyway. And look, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna go have a little go at canal fishing. I'm not a lover of canals. I've gotta be honest, there's two things I don't like in fishing. It's fishing with a pole. I can't seem to get my head around that one. And it's fishing on canals. I just don't know where the fish are. So. A tip off from somebody said, oh, you can catch some perch. Well, I've got a perch, but I'm, I'm basing myself after finding the place on your fishing light. This is a rod I got out of a dumpster. Old bait runner reel. Don't know what's on there, 12, 15 pound line. I'm going to use that for drop shotting because it is like, look, it's a buggy whip of a rod. Um, also, that I would try with uh, drop shotting for, that one I would try for fishing for the perch. And this one's my trusty old kanji. Namura reel there. I think I've got 30 pound braid on there. Most of us don't, like the, don't know the fishery. So I've driven all this way, I bought my seven pound day ticket. Guy told, told me to come down here, he's told me where to go. Free car parking, wow, we're away. I walk up to the bridge, it's chocolate, absolutely chocolate. I can't tell you, the pit of your stomach goes, you're lure fishing and it's all flooded with chocolate. No, no, not dairy chocolate, chocolate coloured water. All lure fishermen know that's normally the kiss of death. So anyway, I've started fishing up there. I haven't even bothered filming it yet, to be honest, because I'm just no enthusiasm at all. Um, I had a big lure on. I've now gone around these boats where he said, try around there, classic place for perch. I don't know where I'm fishing. I sort of don't know what I'm doing. There's nobody to sort of tell you, don't fish there, go a mile down that way. The canals are long, it's seven miles long. But normally around boats you'll get stuff like perch. So I've got to work this area, but I'm going to concentrate on pike. I just want to strike off of something. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm minutes from going home, I've got to be honest, but I'm going to have a few last casts along here. But I won't even put the head cam on, I don't think. I think I'll bother until something happens. And just give it a go, people. That's all you can do, isn't it? Just give it a go. Right, let's get cracking. Let's get casting. I haven't got any faith at all. So I'm working away here now. I've changed too. I'm just thinking years ago what I used to use in coloured water, fly fishing for trout. It used to be a, a fly called the Jersey Herd, which had orange in it. So I've gone for a spinner blade. They, they call them spinner baits or spinner blades. It's an American bass fishing bait. Um, well, I call it a bait, it's a lure. Obviously the blade spins and the single hook is in that uh, squid head, if you like, there. So there's a lot of flash coming off of those. I'm aiming to get vibration as well, so I can actually feel this throbbing through the rod top. 
you know, jud ring, and that tells me when it's through weed. It's a sort of fairly weedless lure, so that's the uh, principle I've got going here. So one thing they do seem pretty paranoid about, and it's in great big letters on the ticket, no cast within 30 yards of any power lines. So whether somebody's actually been zapped, I mean, it's sort of common sense that a carbon fibre fishing rod and the conductivity being with electricity, it's never going to end well, is it? But I can't honestly say and speak from experience that I've had the odd 450 kilowatts go through my fishing rod into my good body. So it's like common sense, really. But they've got signs everywhere. There's a sign behind me, no fishing beyond this point. Well, it's common sense, really. It is common sense. But of course, it's very easy to get carried away casting. It's not the main big super pylons that you can see. Um, it's the low power lines that supply houses and stuff like that. So kids out there, don't fish near power lines. Okay, bearing in mind that I'm totally new here, just a pointer that they do have matches here, because he told me in the winter, when the river floods, they put the matches on the canal. Now, when there's match when there's bait going in, they're catching small fish, where there's small fish, there's predators, perch and pike. So I'm just walking along here thinking, you can't fish up there because of the electric, but this looks like this area here is the first peg, what we call the first peg there, you can see that? Just there, so it's been trodden down a bit, so I'm figuring a few casts around here wouldn't go amiss. But it's just a little tip that might get you the odd, uh, the odd fish out of a situation where you might not actually see anything else. Just seeing that worn down mark there, and you can see it's clear right in here. You can get pike laying in there as well because matchmen will bang their bait out there. So if the small fish come in, it wouldn't take much for the pike to come in. So I'm going to work my way down. There's two other guys are fishing down there. I guess, I don't know if they've got permits, but they saw me and disappeared real pronto. So I guess they might not be local anglers by, uh, by the look of things. Guys, I've just hooked a pike. Caught me totally out of the ordinary. I don't think I'm going to get it. I think it's going to come off in its weed. That's Jimmy, you can see it down there. I'm in the weeds, I'm in everywhere. I might get lucky if I can just get a net under the fish. I think I've got it, I think I've got it. I think I've got a pike. Not exactly a monster, people, but a nice pike. I don't know where he goes, five pounds, something like that, who knows. Really, really lucky to get that one. The first canal pike, we get that one straight back. Well, hope springs eternal, people. There we go, let's get him back. He's gone straight away. Well, there we go. Well, do you know what? Really pleased to get that pike. I had absolutely 100% written this off. I nearly got back in the car and just drove away. Absolutely bizarre. Coloured water like that. I'll tell you what I tried first. I tried, because I don't get a good hookup rate on these single hook lures. I thought, it's got to be big, it's so coloured. I tried this giant one. And then it had a tail, and I had a tiny bump, and I thought, is that a pike hit that? And I reckon a big perch or a pike hit that tail and, and pulled the rubber tail off. I have no shortage of lures, but I wasn't sure whether to actually go with a plug. I can't afford to go deep because I was stupid and not ask the um, the guy in the tackle shop how deep it is, but canals aren't normally deep, are they? So I'm guessing it's four feet, five feet, something like that, and then the weed grows up from the bottom, so probably even two feet. If I let it go down too far, we get too much weed. Well, that's not bad, is it? I need to start it, really, but if I don't catch another one, I figure I've been lucky. What I was doing was really not... I'm looking for a strike from a pike. I was come down here for perch, that's what I've come for, to be honest. But I thought, if I put a big lure on, at least I get a bust on a pike, bang, I miss it, then I can go down and use a smaller lure. But I'm trying to use the vibration factor because the water is chocolate. And I thought um, a spinner blade, the blade spinning, would probably actually get a bit of vibration in the water. So it proved. Onwards and upwards, people. Or downwards if I fall off the bank. I'm going to say, actually, it's, it's not often you actually see a bird's nest in a tree, but I can see one way up there. Just up the top there, I don't know what type of species it is, but there is in fact a bird that's just resting there. I think what I'm going to do is just do cast either side, and I'll give you another tip in a minute. Although I don't like fishing canals, I like to cover as much area as I can. Okay, a sort of tip for covering ground on canals. Look, 
let's say I'm going for that black boat, okay, I cast over there, I'm fishing away like this, <clears throat> I'm going to cast, say from here, let me stand here, I'm going to cast, well that like a fish behind that then, I'm going to cast up to there, right, and I'm going to cast down to the right, which is let's say the maximum is that meadow mist boat over there, okay. Now when you're fishing away like this, the temptation is when you finish fan casting this area, both left and right, you walk down, let's say here when I'm bringing this in, you think I'll walk down to there, that's where I cast, okay? So you're going to walk down to here, right, you think well I cast there, well hang on, but then you're covering ground you've covered twice this way, that's the fresh ground from there, from meadow mist here, that boat to the right, isn't it, that's the fresh ground, you're up there, so you've covered from up there, here's the middle, that's the end, you want to move farther down, you want to go farther down than where your last lure went, landed there. So I'm going to go down here, so in fact I'm casting back up here. Now I can still go where my last cast was, on Meadow Mist, over there. I'm fan casting that way, I'm fan casting over that white boat there directly in front of me. But my lure is coming through a totally different area. Well I've hooked a uh, four pike. Got the one out, got another one right in, just pinged off. The trouble is with these big single hooks that I've got here, these spinner baits, it needs to be a really good, decent size, say four pound up pike that's gonna get it, and that's a big hook, a big single hook. And the other thing I don't mind doing is I don't mind putting these in with a bit, look, watch, with a bit of it, not as bad as this, obviously not as bad as that, but when I cast, I don't want it going in too soft I want to splash because I've seen pike pick their heads up in clear water I've watched them as the lure hits the water and that actually does attract them no question it sort of switches them on and then you start your lure after that sort of standard procedure if you're fishing with surface poppers in the summer Well, I have got one, guys. No action, I'm afraid. Let's get this out. It's only a small one. Got a small one on here, boys. It's only small. Let's get him in if we can. Yeah, I know, he's hooked well, this one. He's hooked all right. Do you know, I don't think this reel's got an anti-reverse on it. Just realised. Here he goes. Let's get him in. There. Well, well, well. I was actually, people, believe it or not, on the way back to the car, walking on the way back to the car. And you can see he's really hit the, it fell out actually. <laughs> it really hit the rubber part of the, uh, of the lure. Again, not a big pike. Quite a nice condition, this one. He's okay, pleased with that. And that's that copper color. Well, well, well. Who'd have thought it in this color water? Can you imagine if it was clear down here? Must be pretty good fishing. Right, let's get this little chappy back. Just let him rest and he's gone. I can't exactly get you any action shots, people, because with these hooks, it's a large single like this. I just cannot afford to stop winding at all. To mess around putting the cameras. I'm, I'm painfully obvious when it's fishing slow like this I just can't keep the battery running and uh, the memory chip just filling up all the time with the pe well basically with the man casting. So you're only going to get to see the fish today but you might pick one or two tips up out of it. Something you will pick up is dogs mess. There's no shortage of dogs along here. This I assume is a bit of a turning circle here 
so it's a little bit of a cutback making it a little bit bigger but also another thing when you're fishing with like big blades like this or we did a big lure with a big vein on the front you might just be able to make out the weed that's drifting down there the wind is going that way but the current is going that way where they're running water off so there's always a little bit of flow and you'll find when you cast upstream you need more uh, retrieves of the reel when you have to get that blade working than you do downstream so you can afford to wind a little bit slower down there because the pressure of the flow the current the movement of the water on that blade here on this blade of the lure will make it work better so you might have to work it a little bit faster coming down the current and a little bit slower coming up the current and obviously don't lift it out till the last moment you never know when that pike's going to take and a lot of them to be honest are right in the margins not today though I've stuck with this lure I haven't changed it at all I've had four hits on it I've only got an hour or so's fishing left a couple hour and a half so I'm going upstream got to wind a little bit faster there to make the blade work the same make it bite the water as it were and then when I cast downstream here I'm going to call it a stream it's just mild flow I can wind just marginally slower and it might make that blade vibrate a bit more don't be afraid to uh, just jig the tip again sometimes these spinner baits work well on a constant speed for the largemouth bass when I've used them in Africa and uh, over in the States I find the hits I get are on the drop but that is in deeper water for pike it needs retrieving better fish this time boys better fish this time this is a better one please stay on I hate these big single hooks there he is oh look let's get that drag eased off oh, I'm locked up on full drag with this braid just one nice fish this is a nice one. Oh no I'm going straight for the net boys straight for the jugular oh he's in them he's in there he's get him out get him out oh nice fish is he a jumper here we go here we go come on ease him in that hook's hanging there holy crikey get in get in get in oh there we go the pike of a thousand casts right how about this one people let's get him off this spinnerbait first big old jaws on that one there that is a beaut that's worth driving all this way for I know <laughs> well I'm gonna have to get the best picture I can out of this one before the dogs and bites come there we go that spinnerbait has been really good under tough conditions it shows you that vibration and I honestly feel it is you know the fact that I've got copper colour in coloured water they do it a lot in Ireland that's a beaut look at that one pleased with that here he goes beautiful I don't know guys maybe I do like canal fishing after all I seem to be okay at it I've done a lot of casting today for those fish I have to say I'll tell you what the sun's going down I think there's a bit more casting to come yet Whew. always bring a hand wipe rag I have to with the cameras but I'll tell you what it was that tip I gave you earlier here again as you can see is another wear mark from a match area the flow's going that way see bits of weed just moving that way over there so any feed they throw out here they're unlikely to feed up there they're going to feed here a match when he's throwing straight out and fishing down so any bait or pike is going to be down and that's why I hooked him right downstream of this matchman's peg I think I'll have another throw in there I've got one of guys just going to walk it up to obviously where the net is I've lost, wait for this, another two or three on this big single hook and I had a big a big swirly type follow this is not a big fish but I'll take him as a little one everything counts at this stage of the day 
Right. This is probably the smallest one of the trip. But listen, hey ho. We'll, we'll take it. It's in. Don't want him twisting up. Like that. Just nailed in the corner. There's a hook out there. That's the smallest one of the day, but you know what? They still look pretty neat, don't they? Don't get any more urban piking than that. Complete housing state in the background. Right, here we are. Back in the tackle shack. I did have some leak and some rain. It did come through there, it's bone dry. Look, absolutely bone dry. So let's get set up because so really pleased, really pleased to get those pike. I was lucky, I want to go back there because if I can catch those when it's coloured, can you imagine what it's going to be like if it was clear? I might not get there this season. In fact, I'm pretty sure I won't. So much rain, it's ridiculous. It's going to be even worse. But although I had some good fishing there in the end, I was told to go upstream or downstream, further that way, and it gets clearer. And I thought, oh, I like clear water, so maybe I'll squeeze a trip in, but I kind of doubt it somehow. It's just wind, rain, wind, rain. I've never known, I've never known a winter like this one. Anyway, I've been sent a goodie bag. I'm inside the tackle shack. Um, we're going to do an unboxing. Mike was sent a package to me via him, and uh, it came this morning. My daughter said, "That's mine. That's mine. It's Amazon. It's mine. It's my makeup. No, it's not. No, it's not your makeup. It's mine. Mine. Me. For me. A present from one of the awesome Army Guy supporters. So let's get it open and see what this gentleman sent us." Right, people, let's clear the decks here. This is important and exciting. A strange looking package, don't you think, people? My mum, when she was alive, used to do Christmas presents and birthday presents with so much sellotape, you needed like a chainsaw to get it apart. What is it? Did she, did she not trust anybody? Did she not want us to have the presents? I don't know, but when you're a youngster, when you're a child, look, like me, you want in, you want in. Another thing, I'd better check, there's not a note in here, otherwise we won't know who it's from or what it's about. Sometimes they put them in the top here. I just, I just had a really, really sad thought. Suppose it's, it's sent to me, and there's a bill in there. This says nothing. That makes it even more exciting. So two packages. Going to do this one, which looks like some form of tackle box. I think there was a gentleman that said. Was it his father was a... Thank God for gaffer tape. Was that my trousers? Get away. Oh no, oh, I've got it, there really is a note inside it, oh no, I'm sorry about that. That was very lucky there. It says, attention, Graham and Mike. Attention. I might not be able to read this now, I've got my readers with me. It is from... Stephen, it's come from Stephen, dear Graham and Mike. I recently sent you an email reference the death of my fishing partner, Tony Palmer. We fished all over the UK, sea, course, and trout. That's good because I'm an all-round angler, and you know that guy, so respect to all the all-round anglers out there that have a go for everything. And enjoyed many years together and laughed all the time, even when it was hard and raining. After Tony's death, his family gave me his trout kick, kit. And to be honest, it sat in my garage for a couple of years unused, as I had my own trout stuff and couldn't bring myself to use his. Please accept this as a gift for the TA team 
and maybe give him a name check if you do. I've got to open up. So this is a shout out for Tony Palmer, who unfortunately passed away, but was obviously an extremely keen fisherman, as was his buddy, Stephen. Stephen, let's see what's in here. That's you, you're responsible for all this tape. A plastic box, it says on there, top. Why, why do I always open things up the wrong way? Oh dear, oh, he's, he's a reservoir man. As you can see there, all men will agree. The booby fly is one of the best ones, so. The booby fly, fly. Oh my God, look. I said it was a reservoir, and that's what it was, I reckon. A reservoir angler. Look at those. Big lures, nice lures. Tell you what, it's way, way neater than my fly box. Mind you, it's much bigger than my fly box. Beautiful. All in foam, and I'm assuming, does it open the other way as well? Yeah, oh my God. There's a complete aviary in here. Look at the colours on these guys. Now I know there's got, got a lot of people in the States will use fairly big lures and I think we're more familiar with some of these but I'll let that uh, just run that camera over those you can see all those there. I'll do some close-ups uh, later on. Now some of the trout fisheries I fish you will be able to fish these because they have like I think it's a one inch rule or a size whatever eight hook long shank da -de -da -de -da with a dressing not to be more than and all that rubbish. But there's some big lures in there and I'll tell you where they would work. If you guys who follow us on the trout, I know some people go, oh, trout, click off, carp, click off. There's no problem, it's no, I'm an all round angler, so I fish for anything and obviously these guys do as well. But if you follow us, I did one back in the September last year, 2019, I think it was or maybe October, uh, down at Chew Valley Reservoir, fishing with a ranger down there for perch. I feel if I took these down there, he would be my best friend, or I would be his best friend, because there's some flies here I feel pretty sure they would be good for perch. All you guys who do fly perch, that sort of thing, let us know, are there any patterns there you recognise? I'm going to pan over them later on anyway, in close-up. There's some real nice ones in there. And of course, he may well have tied these flies himself. He might have tied all those himself, or he may have purchased some. And I mean, I did all fly tying. I had all the vices and everything, did all fly tying. I did one which was deadly, which I invented and wrote articles about in the Fisher magazines, and that was called the Black Aggravator. Uh, anybody, well, I don't suppose anybody old enough like me to even remember it, but I wrote about that fly several times. That was, that was a good fly, a pulsating hen hackle at the front end, a little bit of whipping around it as well. I used to use it a lot at Abington. Oh, trust me, it was deadly. Not as deadly as the Pearly Daddy. Really nice flies there. In here is a pouch of some description. I have absolutely no problem using second-hand stuff, as you gathered. I have no problem with it. Look, if somebody said, uh, Graham, would you like a second-hand Rolls-Royce or a second-hand Mercedes? Would you guys say no? Well, ah, oh, see a fly leapt out at me there, just when he thought he was going to get away and fly off. No chance. This is... I thought it was one of those hit packs, but it's actually a carrying bag. It's got on it, Cobra. Oh yeah, this is secret. It belongs to the British government, because I know they go and have tea and cakes, but they call it a Cobra meeting. And that's what that is, look. We're just going for a Cobra meeting. We're going to have a Cobra meeting. Uh, two sugars, please, nurse. In here, I haven't got anything as good as these. This is exactly the same fly box as I got, a real small one like that. That's got sort of nymphs and stuff like that in there, so have a quick look. Now, I can catch on those, and I will try and catch on one of these flies. I will go somewhere and try and catch on one of these flies in, in, uh, in memory of Tony and see if we can't get something. OMG, Usain Bolt's gonna go. That's a nice one. 
I bet there's a spoon. I think there's a marrow spoon in here. There is indeed a marrow spoon. For people who don't know, there's a scoop. Now, when you catch a trout, bang the trout on the head, and you want to see what it's been feeding on, right? So you put this down the stomach. Obviously dead. Scoop out and roll it once like this, turn it, push it down the stomach as far as you can. Scoop out the stomach contents. And you can see whether they've been feeding on red buzzers, black buzzers, blah, blah, blah. Which I've done, I've had a marrow spoon years ago, I used to do that. But what I find strange is, you catch the trout, you scoop its stomach contents, and you say, oh my God, it's been feeding on red or black buzzers. That's fine, but you caught it on a two inch lure. So, it doesn't always work. I'll tell you what does work. The good night Vienna instrument on the end. That definitely works. That again will get used and the bolt, you say in a bolt I use, will go back into the workshop. Wow. Oh look at that. They're reels but they they stick together with Velcro. I've never seen that before. This is going to be probably be way better than <laughs> yeah, way way better than the old rubbish I use. Don't get me wrong, I catch plenty of fish on my gear. This is some nice stuff, all padded. The reel is a Cobra as well. It's got 78 on it. I can't. I haven't got to be reader, so I don't know. Looks like it might have a nice drag, smooth drag, and it's geared. I think it's geared. And I'm guessing that's a spare spool for it. So you can snap off the spool and put another spool on top of that. Change that over. Oh my God. Oh. You're spoiling me, Tony, from, from beyond. You are spoiling me. Stephen, I'll get these used at some stage. This feels like another spare one. So I did get it right as soon as I saw the size of the flies. I reckon Tony and Stephen did reservoir fishing. Probably successfully, one hopes anyway. And there we go, more spare spools that I guess go onto that main reel frame there. Uh, that one feels just even there like a floater. They might have a floater, an intermediate, and a sink or something like that. So you've got the pouch in there. There's these two things, I'm guessing, I don't know. Would they be the nuts or the gears to change the gearing in there? Somebody help me here. If it goes inside, I don't know. It looks like it comes off something. Does something fit in there? I don't know. I don't know what they do. Just tell me what they do. And here, ah, oh, now these, these might actually get me arrested, lined up against a fence and shot at some of the fisheries I go to. I definitely could not take these to a lot of trout fisheries. <laughs> now, I'm calling that like a red gill, but years ago, I think it was Fred Wagstaff that used to go reservoir fishing. Some of you old guys that are my age, or if there's any out there that are older than me that remember it, I think Fred Wagstaff used to use a lure on the reservoirs, and I think he called it a waggy lure. I think it might have been a cross between a fly and one of these. Uh, it definitely had the tail like that. I mean, man, he caught some big trout. I'll always remember it, the articles. So this one assumes like a miniature sort of needle-nosed red gill. I can't, honestly, guys, I can't read it that close, but they they look like a red gill with what we call a paddle tail or a scoop tail on the back there. It's not curved, I don't think. No, it's a straight flat one, which I just call like a, a sort of paddle tail. Um, the, the slightly scoop tail I would call a baffle. So there you go, guys. Thank you to Stephen for sending the... There's another fly! <laughs> they, they're hatching out, people. They're hatching... They're hatching out everywhere. I'm going to have a go, because I will eventually get down, maybe do perch fishing again. I'm going to try that. I'm definitely going to catch on those. I can almost tell you which one straight away. I'm going to, I'm going to take a gamble and say, I'm going to catch a decent-sized trout in, in Tony's memory on that one there. That's the one I fancy immediately looking in the box, black. Some of the bright ones you think would stand out, but very often they don't always work. They work on a reservoir better than they do a, a, you know, some of the clear lakes that I fish. So let's wait for the uh, weather to settle down. Thanks Stephen for sending this gear. 
I'll tell you what we have got. Another guy in America sent us a, a, a rod. If you, some of you people who follow this will remember. Um, I think it was his, his dad's rod and his dad died and uh, he, he, was, he was racing to see his dad and he had a car crash or a motorbike crash, that was it. And he couldn't get to see his dad and then while he was in hospital, unfortunately his dad passed away. And he sent me, I think it was his dad's rod, and I went out and I caught fish on it. Very soft action. What about if I use that soft action rod with one of these reels? Now listen, it's not going to be balanced because it's quite a, this is a sort of reservoir reel, but big water reel. Let's give it a go and fly and just see if I can catch a decent sized trout in memory of Tony um, and not use my own gear. That's what I'm thinking of. Not, I've got to not make myself, I mustn't use my own gear. The only thing is, I don't know what these geary things do. I'm lost. Nice reel though, nice reel. Brilliant guys, anyway, thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. If you have got anything that you don't use and you want me to try and catch a fish on it, I have, I have fishing tackle, you've seen what I use. I don't need loads and loads of new tackle, but if you've got something that's a bit quirky or different or you just don't use, I'll have a go fishing with it. I don't have a problem with it. I'll try and catch on anything. Do you know what it is? It's a sort of a challenge to me. It's like throwing down the gauntlet. And I'm going to give it a go, and we'll see you hopefully in the next program or two. I'm going to, as soon as this weather breaks, I'm going to go out and I'm going to try and catch a fish on these. So thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Hit the subscribe button on TA Fishing and TA Outdoors. I've got to get indoors. It's due to absolutely lash down and blow tonight. That's right. I'm going to be editing yet again. Apologies to anybody if I missed the odd expletive, but it is. <laughs> done all by me, I do all the filming, all the fishing, I'm filming on my own, I'm pumping two films a week out at the moment, I think we got 750 something films and what I wanted to do was, I wanted to be the only person to put up a thousand fishing films before I either got fed up, bored, ran out of battery or died, any of those, and that's, that's the honest truth, I wanted to be the first one. I am actually now, I believe, the biggest fishing YouTuber, which is nice being British isn't it? The biggest one in Britain, the biggest one in Europe, and we're climbing our ranks. I don't get huge subscribers because I don't pander to that type of YouTube quirkiness. Sure, Michael put the odd title up, but my films remain pretty much the same. And because I did journalism for so long in you know the fishing world with photography, I tend to want a, a start, a middle, and a finish. I know people out there on YouTube say, no, let, let's see the car crash. When did the plane hit? When are you gonna jump off the roof catch a rabbit in your mouth, run across and a fox catches it. No, I can't be doing all that, I can't be doing all that. I go fishing, I want to catch fish, I want to enjoy it, and hopefully pass a few tips over onto you guys. So thanks for all those of supporting us, you know, both Mike's channel and mine. I mean, Mike's is 1,350,000 subscribers. I'm on 200 and I'm about to pass 230,000 subscribers. Look, I'm just an old guy doing it. I don't know anybody else my age that's at that level of producing YouTube films. In a minute, I'll get, I'll slow up or I'll, I'll fade off or whatever, you know, I'll get fed up. But at the moment, I think I've done eight straight years of it. I think we've got 760 films up, something like that. So, you know, what can I say? I can't, I can't do any more. Young guys will come through. They'll beat all my numbers. I don't have a problem with that. Well, they might not be is the diversity of fishing I put up and the information, and some of it is sort of historical stuff. And a lot of this is all old antique stuff. Bit like me, really. But you know what? I am so tired. <sighs> I can't wait to get to bed and get some rest. We'll see you guys in the next show. Any other YouTubers want to copy me? Oh, see you guys. <laughs>